Hi everyone, welcome to Pivotal Stories here at Spring One Platform 2018. I'm Jeff Kelly. My guest is Todd Probert. He's Vice President of Mission Support and Modernization at Raytheon. Todd, welcome. Thanks, Jeff. Glad to be here today. Absolutely. So why don't we start at the beginning? What are some of the drivers of Raytheon's digital transformation? So at Raytheon, we're primarily an aerospace defense and intelligence company. So much like the Internet of Things and the commercial marketplace, we're seeing a, a very large push to put data to work for our customers. It's all about the data and taking that data to an information point a decision point and then taking that decision and putting it into action. And The DOD is looking to take its disparate sets of data and open them up to each other so we can get more and more machine-to-machine uh, -machine conversations going and get uh, to what the Defense Department is calling the speed of relevance. And really that's all about software, so that's why we're here today. So to put a little color on some of the work you're doing, why don't you tell us about a specific engagement with Pivotal? I understand you had a really aggressive timeline. Uh, how did you meet that timeline? Tell us a little about the engagement. Yeah, no, that's a great question, Jeff. We've been working with the Air Force specifically on their air operations centers, uh, and they asked us to, uh, to deploy the Pivotal Ready architecture in 150 days. And uh, when you look at Defense Department weapon systems, that's a pretty aggressive timeline. Uh, we did that, we worked with Pivotal, um, with uh, the, the Ready architecture, and then married that up with Raytheon expertise. So our subject matter experts are very ensconced in, in bringing uh, architectures and computer technology into a security enclave. I'm happy to say that, that we beat that 150 days and, and the uh, Pivotal Ready architecture is up and operating. Awesome. Of course, in addition to technology, there's culture, there's process change that has to happen. Could you talk a little bit about working with your customers in defense and government uh, and how you instill that innovative, agile way of working in an industry that is you know, more known for kind of hierarchy, top-down decision-making and you know, following orders? You can say that the DOD is not known for being agile and uh, we, we appreciate that. In fact, uh, the DOD it, itself is going through a transformation. So uh, their waterfall method of developing anything is, is really getting scrutinized across all of the acquisition community. And, and specifically, we're seeing software programs in the old model model take literally 10 years from definition of requirements to fielding of capabilities. When you go through the development of an RFP, uh, you go through the selection process, you go through a classic you know, SRR, PDR, CDR, uh, code and unit test, developing a system where you're, you're trying to get all of these requirements out and, and tested and, and out to the field, that just doesn't work in today's environment and specifically doesn't work at today's speed of software. Uh, so working with Pivotal has allowed us to really take a, a mature DevOps and Agile framework and, and turn kind of that model upside down. So uh, the relationship we have with our customers is a fantastic one and uh, the fact that we can partner with Silicon Valley and, and kind of be that counterculture within the DOD, I think is working well for us. So another aspect of working with defense customers, government customers, of course, is you've got to deal with a lot of compliance issues, rules and regulations. Uh, and it's not just around how you build software, but also who uses it, how you use it, those kinds of things. Uh, obviously, privacy is a big issue. How do you think about navigating some of those challenges uh, when you're working with your customers? All of those various disciplines really come natural to a company like Raytheon. So for many years, uh, we've been in the intelligence community worrying uh, the various security enclaves, the various compliance issues, um, uh, in, in more recent years, worrying the, the cyber threat aspect of things. So our subject matter experts, that's what they do. They understand high consequence mission. Uh, they understand how to test and how to deploy high consequence software. Uh, this has been a fantastic opportunity for us to come together with a pure commercial company and leverage those best practices and really truly give a one plus one equals three type of solution to our customers. Mm -hmm. I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about some of the tools and some of the methodologies you use. Um, and specifically, how does Raytheon think about the buy versus build question? Whether you're going to build some internal tools and methodologies yourselves or you're going to look to the market uh, for some type of commercial solution. How do you think about uh, that question? Well, that's a fantastic question. I mean, Raytheon is a, a very deep and rich engineering and technology company. So you can imagine uh, the cultural internally is to, to make everything that you possibly can and then you know, buy only that that you can't build yourself. And that's really how we've grown up. In recent years, though, we're looking at uh, what's happening if you look at just the, uh, the internal research and development spend in the commercial community. Uh, companies in the Silicon Valley are outspending the entirety of the Defense uh, Department industrial base, you know, by factors of 10. Uh, and, and we took a hard look a, a number of years ago to kind of turn our make versus buy a decision process kind of upside down. So um, we are, from a philosophical standpoint, if we can go partner to get technology, if somebody else is paid to develop it and improve in it, that we're going to go there kind of first and then spend our precious IRAD money on, on those things that are truly exquisite to our marketplace. 
right? So you're, you're not necessarily in the platform business, it allows you to focus on what you do best and really adding value to your customers. As we wrap up, why don't we talk about you know, where you're headed? Let's say we're on this stage a year from now. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish? What are some of the things on your, your agenda? I mean, we talked a little bit about that one engagement with TRA and, and meeting that great timeline. Uh, talk a little bit about what's on your agenda for the next, say, six, 12 months. So our partnership with Pivotal and the Air Force has done fantastic things. And uh, I think we're just seeing the beginning of it. So with the Air Operations Center program that we're working on, uh, we're definitely delivering at speed. Uh, and, and every day there's, there's new, uh, new boundaries that we're breaking. Uh, the interesting part of it is it's starting to take hold and we're starting to see the rest of the DOD you know, want some of this. And um, that's interesting. And most recently we won a big contract with the Navy to do just that. So we're hoping that what we've gained with this partnership uh, not only takes hold and grows within the Air Force, but across the rest of the DOD. And from a Raytheon standpoint, we're very much committed to kind of this transformation. So exciting times. Absolutely. Todd Probert, thanks for joining us. Hey, Jeff, thanks for having me. Absolutely. <laughs>